oral and maxillofacial surgeons are, are pretty uniquely qualified to provide care for cleft and craniofacial patients because our background, while supported by surgical disciplines um, of various types and the exposure to them, uh, our training has us keep coming back to the to the head and neck, and it includes uh, medical and surgical training, but it also includes dental training, which is important because in most cleft and uh, lip and palate conditions and, and a lot of craniofacial conditions, um, there's significant dental issues as well. Um, and I don't just mean it affecting the teeth, although that's possible, but definitely the jaws and the tissues. And, um, and so to have both the background in that understanding, but also then to, to build on that and include uh, training for different surgical disciplines and then cap it off with sub-specialized experience in cleft and craniofacial, um, I, I really think is kind of the total package. And, and what that prevents is what we see in other models of care where there's, from the surgical aspect, at least there's a handoff. So whoever's doing the primary surgery may not be the one that does the middle surgeries, and it may be a third person still that does the the surgeries that are sort of the capstone surgeries in their in their growth and development. Um, and so any way, any other way you mix it, there's there's that lack of surgical continuity. Um, in this model, it's possible to have one surgical discipline kind of go end to end with the care of that patient. I think. It's one thing to have a team of providers that has the, the passion to provide this care and, um, and the opportunity to do it, but the, the focus has to be on premier surgical results as well. And if there's ever a situation where we feel that the best care of the patient uh, needs to be put in the hands of another individual, we, we do that. Um, we find as we build capacity with our team that we have those same uh, members um, in our team, which is really fantastic. But you know, occasionally we'll have um, an individual that has a need that's very subspecialized, and you know, fortunately we have the network uh, to refer those for those patients. But for the typical cleft lip and palate, even craniofacial um, patient, um, you know, we have um, built what I hope is a is a good track record of. Um, excellent surgical results. Um, that's first and foremost what we shoot for. Um, and we don't know the future. We don't know exactly how, you know, uh, tissue is going to heal or how patients are going to grow and what changes that might bring. Um, but for for each and every opportunity that comes along, you know, we have to look at it holistically. We have to look at it three dimensionally and kind of consider that fourth dimension, which is growth, um, building on our experience um, as surgeons, building on the experience of others on the team uh, to know um, at that time what our recommendation is to provide the best care uh, for the patient and the family uh, for that particular need. Um, as we look back, you know, we always see that, you know, there's some things that we do differently now than we did before. I think that's healthy. Um, I also uh, know that when we sort of check in with other teams around the country, when we go to the national meetings uh, and, and we see what everybody's doing um, and how they're approaching these cases, that we're, we're in line with all this, the major cleft centers from coast to coast, which is also important. I think professionally it's kind of easy to get on an island and only ever do things one way. And, and if you have good results, um, you, not, you may not know that better results are out there. You know, if you if you make these modifications, so I think it takes it takes that um, desire to provide the best care you can, but combined with a little humility, honestly, that maybe we don't have it figured out, and to and to and to look around and follow the literature and go to the meetings and talk to people and kind of do these as a team, do these self assessments and and um, be honest with ourselves, and and that's our commitment to the public, right? I mean. Um, to, to know that if we're going to represent the, the medical care and dental care of these families, for these families in this community, that, that we know to the, to the greatest extent in our power, we're doing it with the best results in mind and the, and the best track record of results that we can, we can possibly achieve.